Hello. Yes. Hello, everyone. Good morning if you're here in Brazil <laughs> and good evening if you're in South Korea. Okay, let me just pin this comment. So today we are, I'm very excited and you should be excited too. We have a special guest. We'll be chatting with Ren. You'll get to know her. She's amazing. I love her. So let's see who is here. Oh, Ren is already here. I'm going to um, add her to the chat. Oh, Guilherme. Hello. Hello, Cuba. Oh, it's good to see you here. And great job with your videos. Keep going with the videos. Uh, I actually really, really love that because I wasn't planning on learning Japanese so soon, but now I'm super excited <laughs> after having watched your video today that's fantastic and it's uh, cool to see someone do this like uh, record the sentences the <clears throat> and uh, write uh, the text below in the under the, the video in the description uh, part because um, it's like a class actually even if you're learning other people can learn too and that's how I feel. Uh, actually, that's what I heard from other people uh, who said that they're learning Polish uh, through my videos. It's not perfect, but oh, let's see what's happening. Request again. Let's try again. Hey, and they're learning a little Portuguese too, Cuba. That's awesome. <laughs> de nada, de nada. Let's see if it will work with Ren. But in the meantime, hello, Janaina. Hello, Eugenio. Good to see you here. I don't know if, uh, if there is some kind of problem. Uh, I don't know if it's the connection. I have already um, added Ren. This is the second time. Hopefully, it will work. So tell me about you. Uh, while we wait, Star Life is here. Guy, I think I need my glasses. Aunt Marcos, hello. Oh, it's kicking you. I don't know, Ren. Let's keep trying. <laughs> it could be the connection. I don't know. Go live. Let's try this way. Let's try again. Good morning, Ale Bahia. Oh, so cool. And is it Antonio? Is it Anthony? Marcos? Where are you from? Uh, from what part in Brazil? Where are you from? Hello, Jael. <laughs> oh, hello. Eliane is here. Now I recognize you. You've told me your, uh, what your handle is. I recognize you. It's good to see you here, Eliane. Well, oh, this is, this is the first time it happens. I've seen this happening with other people, so I know this is kind of normal, right? But let's see. Oh, maybe, Ren, I don't know if you need to follow Melhor Sem Inglês, maybe for the duration of the live, and then, you know, maybe you need to do that. I was kind of... It won't let me send the request to you either. <laughs> Ren, I don't know. Are you following Melhor Sem Inglês? Maybe you can follow just for now, and then you don't need to follow it anymore. Just maybe make... Uh... 
Ah, okay, maybe not. Let's try again. Yeah, I was wondering if this could be an issue. Uh, this is actually, uh, it's good to know. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is a tip for you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm really sorry. It may be loud here because I'm actually in a train station. Oh, that's so I didn't cool. Even... Oh, yeah. This is so exciting, Ren, to be finally talking to you here. First, yeah. I want to say I want to say that when I created my account, not this account, my personal account, Polyglot Erica, you were one of the first people I started following in the beginning of the year in April, and I always so help, uh, happy and grateful uh, for you guys and. Um, I like, I love the support, right? This um, easy, fast, dynamic contact that we have. And uh, one thing that I like about you in your, your videos, you're always recording yourself. And I love that. People know that. Mm. I love your videos, your <laughs> live streams, and it's, everything is so fascinating about your, <laughs> about your videos. So, introduce yourself, please, and um, tell us a little bit about uh, your lear learning language, your language learning process, and your okay. Korean studies and everything. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, I am Ren, and I am an English teacher here in South Korea, and um, it's fun. <laughs> I love English, <laughs> and I love, I love languages. So, um, I started learning Korean kind of on my own. And when I came to Korea, there's a special government program that allows you to change your visa. So you don't only have to teach, you can like get into entertainment or do modeling or, you know, TV. Like there's so many other avenues and like radio and stuff. So I said, oh man, I should really go for that visa because you uh -huh. never know. You never know who you will meet, who networking and yeah. stuff. And everything. So I said, Oh, I will do that. So that's when I really put in the work to study Korean. And I said, I have to push hard, but actually it's you guys, like everyone in this like little circle of language learners that pushed me because I'm like, look at how much they're writing. Look at how many videos they're doing. I'm doing nothing. <laughs> oh no. Oh, wait a moment. So you started learning Korean in the U.S. before yeah. the trip? Mm -hmm. Before, oh, okay. before. How, okay. How long have you been learning Korean? Mm, I started um, just kind of for fun in 2008, but uh -huh. just not really consistent. It was uh -huh. every once in a while. And uh, through a program, it's called Talk to Me in Korean. And it's free lessons. And it's really great and simplistic and very um, down-to-earth learning. So that's what I needed. And uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so uh, from there, um, maybe 2012, I met Koreans at my university. And uh -huh. they were just so kind and warm and welcoming. And they, they just were like, oh, you should visit our country. And I was like, I never thought about going abroad, really. Like, okay. So um, from there, I was like, well, maybe I should consider how can I go abroad and study. So I went to the study abroad office and she said, you know, you can do that and it will be paid through your financial aid. So you don't have to worry about anything. And I said, what? <laughs> That's possible? <laughs> so yeah. And she also suggested I take Korean level one uh -huh. because the school had just started offering it. And I said, wow, well, this is, this is kind of just perfectly aligned Perfect. for me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I was actually in Spanish. Spanish class. I was Spanish uh, level three. So I had to convince the counselors to let me take Korean level one in place of Spanish. And nice. for whatever reason, they allowed me to. Like, everyone's like, no way, no, because that's level one of something. I was like, they let me because I was doing study abroad. So I did it. And I loved, I fell in love with Korea. And I said, I have to go back. I have to go back. I have to learn this language. <laughs> oh, that's great. And then, so you, how long have you been living in Korea now? You're in Seoul, right? No, Is I'm not Seoul? in Seoul. I'm about an hour and a half out uh -huh. from Seoul. 
So oh, actually, okay. I just came back from Seoul. That's why I'm at the train station. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been living there? Um, with my daughter, we've been here almost three years together. Three years. Yeah. Yeah, so, almost three it, years. It is, you seem to have adapted so well <laughs> to the yeah, life there. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very comfortable living. It's, Korea is very comfortable living. I love, I'm a night person, so mm -hmm. I love being able to walk the streets, you know, maybe 2, 3 a.m. and feel so safe. That is uh, amazing. Uh -huh. Because in the U.S., I can't do that. No way. <laughs> really? So Because here in Brazil, Brazil we think we, <laughs> here in Brazil, the image that we have of the U.S. is that, yes, you can walk, you know, in the streets mm -hmm. anytime and... <laughs> But it depends then. It depends on, on the place. Yeah, it really depends. And, but, oh, my area is very intense. Uh, <laughs> It's very okay. intense. I can't yes. really do that. Uh, I, every now and then, I watch some of your live streams. I love your live streams because they're, you're always, you know, walking around. Uh, or, like, I think your last stream, uh, live stream, you were in a party, at a party. It was oh yeah yeah was YouTuber. it karaoke or something ah youtubers yes you yeah YouTubers. youtubers in korea mm -hmm. yeah but i remember one of the live streams that i remember it was it is my in my memory now it's you walking in the streets with your daughter lily right mm -hmm. and i think it's i don't know if it was early in the morning but the streets were it was it looked it seemed like early in the morning and uh, the streets were kind of empty and you were just strolling or going somewhere i don't know where but uh i don't know it was so so cool to see you do that in the in the live stream and you were talking i think i'm not sure you were speaking english or korean and another interesting thing is that you make a lot of videos in korean i know zero korean <laughs> but i like <laughs> to listen to you <laughs> and uh, oh, to try you. to imagine <laughs> <laughs> I try to imagine what are you talking about because you also write in Korean in the description, right? So, um, yeah. but yeah, I one day would like to to learn. So, what are some of your tips? You've been learning it for a while now. You are a teacher yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. um, one question that I like to ask, always ask uh, teachers and, and language or uh, learners, is how do you start speaking? For example, so. How do you remember mm. how it's been a, a few years now? <laughs> That is still a struggle for me, actually. I am very, I become very embarrassed when I have to speak, and I'm still working on that. Writing, um, listening, I have it down, but speaking is so hard for me. I'm just really not used to it still uh, because I'm, I'm an English teacher, and my building is all English teachers, so I don't have to communicate. Mo the majority of the time in Korean. Mm -hmm. so when I go to stores, I'm speaking and, you know, but with people I know, it is very hard for me to speak Korean to them. But people I don't uh, know, okay, sure. <laughs> ah, okay. So you feel yeah. embarrassed, you feel like um, people will feel it's awkward for you to make mistakes or something like that? You feel Yeah, I'm afraid about... that people won't understand what I'm saying but they always say it like I sound really good and that it sounds natural so I said okay I'm gonna push myself to do these videos to mm -hmm. make myself speak more and practice more because if I if I'm not doing that then when I'm out in public I'm not going to do that yes and how long have you been doing these videos on Instagram I uh, speak okay. oh I don't know maybe maybe two years I Jeez. think I just barely started, like, maybe the beginning of last year, I think I started. Uh, just okay. I, I was doing mornings with Rin, and then I kind of stopped, actually, this year, those, and just started doing, like, short videos. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> and how do you feel, or how did you feel in the beginning, recording yourself, like we're doing here? Seeing yourself it's in very, the camera, you know? It's very awkward. <laughs> Even though I do YouTube, <laughs> doing it for language was totally different. You know, okay. and I was like, oh, I was like, this seems kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but but I have grown to really enjoy it because now I can go back and see the growth and mm. see the change. And that, I yeah. think, is really important when you're learning anything. Yes. This is, uh, I've been doing this, uh, I started doing this this year. 
recording myself in, in when I started the Instagram account. And I fell in love with this kind of uh, way to, to learn, to practice. And I tell people here to do the same. But it's very hard. It's very hard. Uh, there is a lot of resistance. And uh, I actually have only one student who has been doing that regularly. Mm. And she, she has done that. She created uh, her own personal account and she records herself. She's learning English, by the way. Actually, all of them are learning English. Um, mm. But I, I feel this is, I, I've been learning faster by doing this. When I was, right. uh, when I started learning German, for example, I was uh, practicing, you know, traditionally through books and writing. Everything is very important. But if I, I feel that if I had started doing this, like recorded myself, things would have been really different and I would have been improved much faster and, for example, I can't speak now. After four years of German, I cannot speak because I hadn't recorded myself. And now I decided to do that. That's my plan for next year, actually, oh, to get back to German. And, yeah. So how do, what about your students? How do you, uh, what do you tell them to start speaking in English? <laughs> how do you, how I tell do them you to just try. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell them, just try. I said, it's better to try and say something, and then I can try to piece it together. I said, because I, I know the language, so even if you say are saying like one or two words, I can try to get a sentence from that. And mm -hmm. my lower level students have really picked up on that. And like, I mean, we, we actually have a debate class, and I'm like, Oh, it's really tough for them because they don't have the language ability. So mm -hmm. I say, you know, it's fine if you don't know all the words in English. Just say something, anything. So like one debate thing was like, uh, <clears throat> it was like a pizza versus chicken, like which is better. And uh -huh. so one boy just said, pizza, uh, yummy. And I said, oh, so you think pizza is better than chicken and he was like oh and then he repeated after me yes pizza is better than chicken it is yummy so we did that and I said see you you can speak English you can mm -hmm. do it you just have to you know say something mm -hmm. do you I'm going to ask you something here I don't know if this is uh, politically incorrect but do you feel there is a difference in attitude towards learning anything? It could be a language uh, there and uh, in the East and in the West. Like <laughs> here, we are in the West, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. You know, I, I don't know. I have this fantasy in my head that Eastern people, they're very focused. Is this true or is it just a... <laughs> my um, preconceived it's a, idea. It depends. I think it depends on where they are, which level they're at, because some of my elementary students are not, are not there. They're not on that focus track. But then mm -hmm. I have some who are just like, I have to be, you know, I have to put in the work. I have to study hard. I should make good grades. You know, they really want to do well. And I think it's really just comes from, you know, your home. <laughs> if your parents are encouraging uh, you, you know, uh, cheering you on. And there's some who say, you know, my parents want me to be in the higher level classes, but um, I don't want to be because mm. they're going to get angry at me if I don't do well. And I said, well, I think that is the difference. You know, mm. there's a higher standard, you know, for the child's education, I think here. And they uh -huh. really put so much on getting good grades that it can really deter a lot of students from, you know, studying and even like pursuing their dreams. And it makes me really sad here because many of my students tell me like, oh, teacher, I really want to be a model. And I say, well, just try being a model. Why not? And they say, no, my dad wants me to be a doctor. I can never even try that. And I'm just like, mm. what? Why, why can't you try that? No, my parents will disown me. I'm just like, wow, you know, that's, that's really intense, you know? Yeah. Um, but I just tell them, I say, you know, I said, as you get older, you will see what you really want to do. And I said, I really encourage you to take that path. But, you know, I can't really tell them, don't listen to your parents. <laughs> <I am. laughs> you know? Brent, how, 
How old are your students? What's the average? Uh, my students, I teach grades three to six right now. So they are, well, there's Korean age. So some are one or two years older than they really are. It's uh, very confusing, Korean age. Um, so I think my oldest students are 13, but maybe really 12. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay. <laughs> And then I mean, just... the youngest ones, maybe eight or nine. Okay, so uh, people are asking again, where are you from? <laughs> oh, where am I from? I am from the U.S. I'm from Texas. I'd even say that. <laughs> I'm from Dallas, Texas. So. Yeah, because some yeah, people joined the... the... Go ahead. Oh, go I ahead. saw... Yeah, there was, a, there was a comment. Someone asked, what was the most difficult aspect of the Korean language during your learning journey? Awesome. Um, yeah, I think the most difficult part was just speaking, really, like getting myself out there and starting to say anything. Because, you know, you can sit at home and study all the time by yourself, but mm -hmm. you don't know how much you really know until you're communicating with that native speaker. Mm -hmm. Today we have the internet, right? So it's no excuse anymore that you don't have anyone to speak Korean to. <laughs> Did It you is, use the that internet? Is very true. Right? Did you use the internet before you traveled? Um, because you said you met some Korean students. I don't know. You met some Koreans yes. before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At my university, so I became friends with um, the Koreans who were studying English there. So they yeah. started, you know, trying to teach me some of the Korean language. And actually, I felt really comfortable with them. And I spoke a lot, actually, at that time with, like, just the basic phrases. So those are, like, ingrained in my head. But, um, like, this higher level stuff, like, I haven't really been speaking it and practicing it much. So I, I'm like, now I'm like, I have to, I just hit that level four and got my certificate, <clears throat> excuse no, me, yeah. certificate, that certificate I got. So I finished yeah. the whole government language portion. So you did. I'm, so this is, yeah. this is it. Uh, congratulations, well, by the way, language. I need to say this now <laughs> again. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I have actually one more level, but it's okay. about Korean society and culture to finish uh -huh. the whole program, but the language portion, language learning portion is done. So that's wow. really exciting for me. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. <laughs> great, great job. And this is very uh, inspiring to all of us, right? <laughs> to, for me, to me, it is definitely. What are your plans mm -hmm. now in terms of uh, learning Korean? Do you have, because if we've done this, test, do, do you want to take the next one about uh, society and culture or is it part of your plans? Yes. Or? Yes, I will definitely be taking that one because to get change the visa, like with it, we have to have points. So there's a limit of like a minimum of 80 points. And this program, when you do the whole program, it gives you extra points. So, oh. yeah. Oh, there's an announcement. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. But uh, to get the 80 points, I'll be at like 82 points once I finish level five. So I kind of need it to change my visa. So I definitely will do it. But my main goal actually now is to become fluent. Like I want, there's a topic test, test of proficiency in yeah. Korean. And uh -huh. the top level is six. And that is fluency. So yeah. I said, that's my goal now. I want to be fluent. I want to be speaking fluently. I want to reach that goal. So now I'm just like, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you you get there. I'm, I'm sure of that. Do you have a, a routine? Do you have a language learning routine or no? How do you study or how do you prepare for tests or do you study every day or not? Way... Oh, no, no, no. I, I, okay, I do study every day. I have apps, you know, like Duolingo. Many of us uh, use that, Duolingo. Yeah. I use Memorize for uh -huh. the Korean, like, little words, vocabulary, and I use... I jump in and out of lingo deer. I'm still still not sure about that one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm in and out of it. And uh, there's one more, I think. No, maybe not. Maybe, I think that's just it. But, you know, those just pop up. So I do them daily when they pop up on my phone. But uh -huh. my main days, I was doing Wednesday and Saturdays, like four hours in a cafe, just rewriting uh. notes, um, practicing reading passages, and... Um, Actually, I, I think the best thing for me studying to memorize vocabulary was I was rewriting 
my vocabulary. Like I wrote it all in the book, translated it. And then uh -huh. I got a blank notebook, like a sketchbook. So uh -huh. everything's blank. And then I just wrote, you know, rewrote the words like three times each. And it was uh -huh. so time consuming. But to get spelling down and, you know, to try to get it in my head, I wrote it. So it, that seemed to work actually really well for me uh, because uh, I think just doing something with the words. Uh -huh. Yeah. And do, do you, like you said, do you practice them one, uh, you know, just the words by themselves or do you make sentences and try to think of a context and some people say that it's, uh, it's, it's helpful to imagine a story in your head and to give a context <laughs> Yes, yes. That's why I, that's actually one of the reasons I like using Memrise because they have mm. cards you can add and they have the cards where like people have created or you can make your own to memorize the words. So, you know, I, I, I can't even think of anything right now <laughs> like Chegg and Chegg is book. So uh -huh. like um, my Chegg is on my desk. Like I would just say uh -huh. something like that. So then I'm like, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I know Chegg is book, <laughs> you know, oh, okay. but people have made it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, Abiel, nice. Abiel Marcel, he's Brazilian. He's living in Japan now. I, I think he's following you. Uh, I've, I, he's one of the people I started following, too, in the uh, Polyglot community. He's awesome. And I want to learn Japanese, too, in the future. He's saying that he, he, has, um, he knows Japanese well, and he has just started learning Korean. He started a few weeks ago. He says that the structure of the language is quite similar. But the pronunciation, the Korean pronunciation is harder. Is that it? <laughs> ah, I, um, I was actually learning, trying to learn Japanese before I jumped into Korean. So that's really funny. Um, I found that the best thing for pronunciation for me, after I learned how to read Hangul, was jumping in, uh, looking at the blog post, the Learn Korean in 15 Minutes by a guy named Ryan Estrada. Oh, good to know. That just like changed everything. I mean, I was able to read faster. I, my pronunciation got better. Like my Korean friends were like, what happened? Because you sound better. And I said, this thing, I did that and read it like four times. Actually, probably more than that. Probably like 400 times. But <laughs> it, it, just, it tells you English words that sound like those sounds. So it was, it was okay. great. Yeah, it's a, a reference. Is this a, um, an Instagram account? What is that again? Ah, is no, it is um, online. It uh -huh. is, like, you can Google it. Um, and it's, it's Learn Korean in 15 Minutes by mm. Ryan Estrada. Okay, yeah, it's okay. like it's like a little comic strip. And uh, okay. it looks really interesting. And he's like, yo, anyone can learn how to read. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, looking at that, yeah, that's true. Oh, this that's is fantastic. Really sensitive. Sorry, Ren. I just pulled a, pulled a paper cup out of the trash can. So I'm, <laughs> I feel really sad because he doesn't, he's a homeless man, homeless man here. So, just, uh, uh, okay. So there are homeless people. I didn't know that in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, there are. There's many, a lot of them in Seoul. Um, actually, when I first came, I went through the subway late at night, and they all had their um, cardboard boxes set up, laying out with their bags and stuff, and I was just so shocked, so overwhelmed, because I wasn't expecting that. So, yeah, I came out, I was just, like, crying. I'm like, no! <laughs> Sadness everywhere. Oh, yes, but, but this is... Because, Ren, uh, my husband and I, Newton and I, we, we like a lot uh, Eastern culture in general. My husband, particularly the Japanese culture and the mm -hmm. Korean culture, too. And uh, we found on YouTube a few channels of guys. I don't know if they are Japanese or Korean or um, uh, people, Americans, I don't know, who live there. And they, the, the videos they make is like they go with a pro, uh, how do they call, how do you call those cameras? A pro camera? I don't know. Uh, GoPro? And he, GoPro? GoPro. Mm. GoPro. He just uh, uh, walks around the city recording, just that. And he does that for 30 minutes, one hour. So it's very relaxing <laughs> to watch those videos mm -hmm. while we are doing some exercise or something. And we can see the a little bit of the city of the part of the city they're showing 
And I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know. We don't often see this, this side, you know, of the city. So we just get to see maybe the, like everywhere else, the, the, uh, the more touristic part of the, the places where mm -hmm. they are, right? And we don't get to see that side. Um, and we get kind of a distorted <laughs> notion right of things because of that but it's it's nice but it's important to have a brother right and right now with the uh, k-pop being so big you know that's really also kind of distorting things and people are like no about Korea that all is good. and i say no place can be all good i'm sorry that's not realistic <laughs> What's going on with this K-pop? I'm a little older. I don't know what's this. And I see a lot of teenagers <laughs> following these guys. Tell me, uh, teach us. Tell us about it a little bit, please. Uh, K-pop is uh, Korean pop music. But um, actually, a lot of people say everything Korean music is K-pop, but that's not true. They have many genres here. You know, they have heavy metal. They have heavy rock. They have, you know, all the screamo, all of that stuff. They have ballads and indie. And, you know, I'm actually more of an indie rock girl. So, I mean, I like K-pop. I listen to a little bit of K-hip-hop. But, like, uh, K-pop mostly is because the fandoms. That's how they grow so big. That's how they become so popular. And there are levels of fandom, which are pretty intense, where it's like, <laughs> you just like the group. And then it's like, <laughs> you are part of their fandom. And then it's like, you are Sasang fan, which is like top. And you are not really a fan. You're kind of like a crazy person who follows them in taxis. And there's like taxis you can pay to follow the celebrities. And it's oh really God. dangerous, actually. Like, some people have been injured, like, hospitalized. But they oh pay God. because they're so... That's, like, obsession level. But they uh -huh. believe that, oh, I'm, I'm their biggest fan, you know? They love me. And it's like, they have no idea who you are. <laughs> and, you know? Um, and then there's anti-fans. And those are the fans who send these guys, like, disgusting things. Like, bodily fluids, disgusting things. And it is intense. Oh and I wow. mean, there's, and then, you know, like the biggest group right now is BTS. And um, actually, one of the members is constantly gets death threats. And I'm like, I don't oh get God. it. Like, why <laughs> would you, I, in my head, I, I can't understand that part. Yeah, but, really you know, I understand, I can understand, you know, the normal fandoms. Actually, my niece is now in love with BTS. And I, and she does <laughs> hashtag BTS Army all over Instagram because she just yeah. started Instagram and I'm just like, please, oh, what are you doing? But <laughs> yeah. she said she wants to learn Korean. So I'm excited. Oh, that's, no, yes. This is what I noticed that there are a lot of younger people like teenagers and so on. And they're learning a very hard language because of a, a, a pop group that they like. This is amazing, right. Right. right? Right. Uh, and some is, of them yeah. can speak it better than me because they listen to all the music and can say all the sentences because they said when they come to Korea, they want to be able to communicate with their, like, with the guys in the band. And I'm like, that makes sense. Hey, go you. <laughs> That's motivation, right? That's a yeah. good example. I don't of have motivation. that kind of motivation. <laughs> My motivation isn't that way. <laughs> Do you have a favorite uh, singer group, a Korean singer group, or oh, there's someone oh. behind you. Oh, I, I knew you. Good, chico, live Hanzong. Oh, yeah, hi. How do I say hi? Ah, yeah. Ah, 아니에요. 그 밑에 그 가방 밑에 있어 좀 비가. She is saying my daughter is cold because, but she, I put my jacket on her and she's. She's on like bags, so she's not like actually on the floor, but she can't see that. So she's like, no, put her like on the chairs. And I'm like, no. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some people talk to you. People like strangers come and talk to you. This is something else that I didn't know they did. I thought people didn't talk to each other. Uh, they don't talk to each other usually like on trains and subways because they're all in their phones. 
But oh. um, the older people, if you have children, will just come up to you, or just in general, foreigners, like anyone, they will just come up, like me with her, they will like, oh, chuayo, like she's cold, pull down her pants, like, oh, put her hood up, you know, she's too cold, I'm just like, why are you touching my child, you know? <laughs> I had to really get used to that. And actually, I told her, because people will try to just pick her up, and I said, no, that is not okay. You cannot oh, really? just pick up my child. Yes. And so Korea is a big drinking culture, has a huge drinking culture. So a lot of drunk old men will try to pick her up. And oh. I actually had to stop one yesterday at the train station while we were there because he just came and like picked her up. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, no, 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 we have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, sorry, like, no. And he was like, oh. obviously drunk, but he uh -huh. had picked her up already and was like stammering with her. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> this is too much for me. Oh uh, my God. So I was asking you about your favorite band, about your favorite singer. If you have any recommendations oh. for people who are learning Korean. <laughs> Okay, let me, my, let me, let me think. Um, I think my favorite, one of my favorite groups is called The Rose. They're like an indie rock group. And um, I don't really actually have like favorite singers, but I listen to a variety. And uh -huh. um, I think for, um, oh my goodness, right now, I really like Loco. He, he just came out with a new song. It's called Shigari Degachi. And it's like, it takes time. It's really popular right now. And it's mm -hmm. really good. And there's another artist named Crush. And he did an English song called Lay Your Head on Me. And uh -huh. that's just really sweet ballad. And nice. um, for popular music, I, I, I don't listen to many girl groups. Uh, <laughs> because I can sing the guy groups better myself. So <laughs> I usually but, listen to male singers. By the way, you sing. You play the guitar and you sing. I've I've watched you singing on Instagram. I do. You compose, and you write and you write to compose. I oh do. I, <laughs> I try to keep that part hidden because I was actually a music major in college, my community college. Oh my so my associate's degree was in music, vocal performance, and so I learned how to compose and all that stuff. But um, due to throat issues, I mm. haven't been able to really sing anymore. So I'm just slowly trying to get things out here and there. So oh, but I, so I just cool. looked into copywriting and all that stuff recently because I have music already. I just, uh -huh. no one knows <laughs> except for oh. my best friend who, who helped me record it all. <laughs> okay. And do, do you, uh, okay. Just uh, something before I forget, Cuba, uh, why it's okay, is asking, he's saying, he's commenting that Korean ortho orthography, <laughs> orthography is pretty difficult. Uh, did you find it difficult? How did you manage to overcome the, the difficult part of writing in Korean? Writing? By writing um, a lot? I, I just copied a lot of the writing. I, mm -hmm. I actually found the Korean writing very simplistic compared mm. to, because I actually, I think if you did cursive writing, that Korean writing can be very easy. Um, just lots of practice, I think. And oh, one thing I remember doing was when I saw like Korean, I would just use my finger and like, just uh, do this. Okay. Okay. And like, okay. kind of like, yeah, I would just do that. And so when I went to write it, like, later, because I, I'm one of those people, I read signs as I'm passing. Like, I try uh -huh. to read all the signs. So I'm like, uh, okay, it says, one, like this one. This one says, Wanju SO. So I would say, Wanju, okay, Wanju, 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 uh, and do that, like, as I'm saying it, so I can remember how to write it. And then, like, I would go home and write that down. I'm like, okay, I remember, like, how my hand went. Okay, Wanju. Uh, and I, and maybe it helped that I did conducting, like some conducting, uh, you know, like memorizing beats. It's kind of like good. musical things. <laughs> Very nice. Well, my husband is. Uh, he told me the names of the channels. Maybe you can watch and tell me later what you think. Uh, one is Nippon Wandering in Japan. Nippon okay. Wandering, and the other one is Rambalak. I don't know how to say Rambalak. Rambalak. It's. I think okay. it's in Japan too. I'm not sure if it's in Korea. 
but it's very relaxing. Maybe it's an idea for you to go. Actually, that's what you do in your live streams. Maybe. Yeah, that's I, why I, I did remember. one. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if I did it on Instagram or if I did it on my Facebook, but I did one of like showing my town, like downtown. I think it was on uh -huh. Instagram because I don't, I don't live stream much on my personal Facebook, <laughs> but I was like showing my downtown area and like I was walking downtown and then a bar that I went to and like the menu and yeah, people really liked that video a lot. So, uh -huh. well, Kuba is saying that I meant the patching. I don't know how to say that. P-A-C-C-H-I-N. Patching? Uh, patching? Patching. Patching. The, the bottom. So, so in, in the, the four, four letters. letters segment. Um, in the down row, the only one is pronounced. How does that work? <laughs> ah, the patim, yes. You have to just memorize. Memorize the ones that are pronounced and the ones that are not. Actually, there's like a whole <laughs> slew of, you know, like rules for patims because they are very challenging. Like if you have a, like, in, the, in, in a patim, like it changes to another one if you have dia uh in the pachim it changes to another sound so even in my class like the level i just finished four you know we were still learning because there's just so much and it was constantly being practiced every chapter um because it's that's just hard <laughs> hard to remember i mean that's you know it's kind of like the English one where you have like all the words that sound the same but have different meanings. You just got to know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. And try to know the sentence structure. And this one, you just have to, you know, know, really know what that is. So, uh -huh. And there's some that sound the same in Korean based on because of the pacha. So. Uh, okay. Well, back to the YouTube channels. Uh, my husband is saying there is the Korean. Oh, the announcement again. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Korean. <laughs> The Korean walking TV. So this is a tip for people who want to know more about Korea. I don't know what city, but it's a Korean a YouTube channel, Korean walking TV. It's very nice. Okay. But you have a YouTube channel then. I do. I do have a YouTube channel. It is Musical Soul, but like S-E-O-U-L, Soul, like South Korea. Uh, soul and um, but you yeah. can. It's easier to find me by searching my name actually. So Rin Curry. Yeah, R E N C U R R Y, Ren Curry. And yeah, I'm, I do a lot of things on my channel. Very, I don't like because people suggested if you want to do music, you should have a separate channel. And I said, no, that's not me. <laughs> and they were saying, oh, you should make a separate channel for your daughter. No, that's not me. That's too much work. And so I said, I should just put everything there and put them in different playlists. That's why playlists exist. And so yeah. that's what yeah. I've been doing. I do um, monthly giveaways of K-pop things. Oh, <laughs> good to yeah. know. K-pop, uh -huh. K-pop things. Um, this month is actually a Korean learning book from uh -huh. Talk to Me in Korean. And then it's a K-pop 2019 calendar and um, a mystery prize. <laughs> very nice, very so, nice. Yeah, and, so uh, I do that every month. Ah, that's very nice. Do you have any plans for next year? What are your plans for next year, 2019? Actually, I'm about to start um, doing like a learn with me because I have this other book that I bought and it teaches about Korean culture and uh -huh. uh, stuff. And someone suggested that book to me because of the level five on Korean culture and society, but it has a uh -huh. Korean page and an English page. So my thing was I will show, maybe show the English and maybe read the Korean part so they can see it as I'm going through. Just uh -huh. an idea. <laughs> but that, that's, that's my plan for 2019 to help myself as well to study more. Yes. yes, well, there are some things here. First, will it be on YouTube or Instagram? Uh, I haven't decided. People yeah, have asked decided. me to do Instagram TV. And I said, oh, okay, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing is, oh, my God, I think I forgot. <laughs> I, I knew I would forget it. Um, oh, yeah, no, I remember. I think that we learn more when we teach. 
I, it happens with me. Do you feel that way? Do you learn more when you're teaching something? I definitely do because I teach grammar at my school and I try to tie in Korean, my Korean grammar I learn to the English grammar they're learning. And I realized the ones that I, when I actually did that, well, I stopped doing it, but when I actually did that, I remembered those grammar points much better. And I said, okay, I need to start making sure, making these go together to yes. uh, really have them in my brain. And that was actually a struggle for my test this time was that I couldn't remember the grammar from the previous unit or, or the previous level because our uh -huh. test had mostly level three grammar. Uh -huh. So I said, I, I remember seeing it, but I can't remember if this is the real meaning or if this is the meaning. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but I passed. Hey, I, I must have remembered yeah. something. <laughs> yes, yes, it works. It works. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I'm in the very beginning. I've, I'm a beginner in Polish, so I cannot. I cannot teach anything. But just by recording the videos, maybe some people are. Uh, I don't know. Getting to getting more familiarized with the language. But uh, I'm thinking that maybe in the future, uh, by showing some, uh, especially grammar and uh, showing some points, making videos, I think it will help me remember and understand more. Because when you teach, you have to pay more attention. You have to remember more. Uh, and uh, it, it gives me more focus, you know? So I, I think it, uh, it can be helpful in that way. In that way. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. The, the guys on this phone just like walking and like staring at me. So I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Well, but, but what, what other kinds of cultural shocks, Ren? Can you give uh, some examples of? Oh, <laughs> the lovely one shock. of just people. Uh, there's the it's mostly with old, elderly people. So, uh -huh. like, you'll sit on the subway and they'll just like start petting you. Um, <laughs> really? It's really yes. It's really interesting. I mean, um, I don't know. They're like, oh, skin so soft. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> and, um, and the other one is the hair. They will just like uh, start touching your hair if they like it. They will just put their hands through your hair. A stranger, and, a stranger in the street will just get close to you and yeah. start petting. <laughs> yes, and then there is also sometimes you'll be offered um, alcohol <laughs> when you're just walking the street, like past the convenience store, because they they have like this thing where they usually sit outside of convenience stores and drink. Uh, Korea, oh, okay. you can drink anywhere in Korea. You can drink like anywhere. Well, not like in your car when it's running, but you know, you can drink anywhere on the street at all hours. Like alcohol is open all hours. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really funny. <laughs> what, what kind of, okay. Kobe is saying I had a Korean friend who asked me if my blonde hair is real. <laughs> yeah. If it's yeah, real. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Also, they want to see if it's real. They are touching to, right? To yeah, some some other like black girls have said that they will try to rub their skin color off. I haven't had that happen, but I said, <laughs> oh wow! Like they'll say, oh oh, shower Peter, like you're dirty, and like pretty much. And like I was like, oh, these are these are the elderly people from the countryside who do that uh -huh. because they haven't seen black people. They're so isolated, they're not yeah. used to that. Yeah, they're isolated yeah. and they, they have it. When I worked at my um, school, my previous school, when I first started teaching in 2014, so I've been back and forth, but um, my school there, one of the students said, teacher, why are you always dirty? And I said, oh, I'm not dirty. I take showers every day. <laughs> and um, he's like, no, teacher, your skin's different than mine. And of course, this is half Korean, half English. And um, I was just like, okay, can you, can you take it off? You know, I was like, can you take it off? Can you get the wet tissue and take it off? And the kid like tried, I was like, see, I'm not dirty. <laughs> it's my skin color. And so I pulled yeah. up like these images of like just a variety of shades of people. Uh -huh. They were yeah. just like, whoa. So that was yeah. really nice learning experience. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Here in Brazil, it's, it's, Everything. We are all mixed. You can see everything. You people don't find anything. Uh, we are used to, to seeing all kinds of, you know. Uh, it's a huge country, right? This is a difference, too. 
because Brazil is a continental country, almost mm -hmm. or bigger than the U.S. I don't know. It's huge, so the variety is enormous, and we're always mm -hmm. in touch with each other. But when you are in a very small country, especially a very isolated, you know, kind of, I don't know, protected some, I, uh, not protected, but they, they don't have much contact, right, with right, uh, right. other people. Uh, very then it's interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what kind, you said they drink a lot. What kind of alcoholic drinks do they drink? Oh, they there's have, the big one, most popular, soju, which is the country's, like, drink. I'm not kidding. Like, it is everywhere, <laughs> ads everywhere, soju, soju. Like, soju. people have made songs about it. Wow. And it is, and you can get it in the U.S. It's there. It's so popular. Like, around the world, like, people are getting it. They're getting lots of money now because people getting into K-pop and they're like, more people know Korea. Let's get our soju everywhere. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's interesting to see these uh, dynamics, right? What happens uh, with the, you know, a, a pop group makes people all over the world want to learn Korean, teenagers especially. And then right. because of that, you can sell things because of, the, you know, it's crazy how these things work. And uh, what else? I've been reading. I liked a lot to read about uh, stories related to North Korea. <laughs> what ah, is, yes. Do you hear stories? Do people talk about it or no? How is uh, people's, um, you know, how do people feel about that there? Um, actually, during the more intense time when they were talking about new nuclear bombs and all that Korean people were very very calm and they're they're still very calm uh -huh. they said you know we've been hearing about these nuclear attacks for years you mm -hmm. know since yeah. the, they were you know since they did it you know they didn't sign really sign a peace treaty thing but you know they they had peace so they said you know this happens every year we have these scares every year there's nothing uh -huh. different. We're just going to go about our lives. But you saw on other news, world news, it was so hyped up. And I'm like walking yes. the street and people are, people are sending me messages like, are you okay in Korea? Do you need to come <laughs> home? Like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, no one is hiding out, you know, no one is uh -huh. taking precautions. There's nothing. And now, now with the talks with North Korea, there, there's two sides, of course. Um, there's the people who are for it and there's people who are against it, but I found the majority of the people I know are really for it. They're really happy about it. They want to see unification between the countries mm -hmm. or at least, or at least some sort of solution to the families that are still mm -hmm. stuck in North Korea that have mm -hmm. family in South Korea, because that has been the main, um, push from the South mm -hmm. Korean president is to get those families reunited. Because, uh -huh. the, the, you know, the, the age of those people are getting so high up that it's like, you know, their family's like, okay, my grandparents are not going to make it. I won't get to see them again before they pass on. And, you know, they, they can't do anything about it. But there's a train being built. There's a train being built um, from North Korea to here. To really? have a Yeah, they're going to have a place for meeting um, the families, for families to meet on the I don't know if it, I don't really know if it's South Korean side, North Korean side. I really don't know that, but uh -huh. yeah, they they're they're working on that. I think the wow. UN approved it. I think I read that the UN had approved it. Wow, that's that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> Because yeah, the, the, I mean, there's a lot of people who go to the DMZ, and I, I never got that because I say, you know, I, I'm not one to take a chance mm -hmm, on stuff yeah, like that, definitely. like dangerous things. So yeah. I said, you know, the and now they're like, oh, you should go now because they removed all the security. I said, no, that makes me want to go less. I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. Like, there can be a rogue North Korean, you know, who's just like, Oh, you know, no, so it's all open. Let's take down some people. Like, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were talking about this uh, homo homogeneity and uh, kind mm -hmm. of isolation about the news, uh, the news that people watch uh, on TV. Of course, there is international news, right? Right. And how how do people? Because this is very different <laughs> from from here, right? 
how do people feel about world uh, international issues and things like that do they uh, what's going I on I feel like for the countries? most part they don't know <laughs> they don't know uh, like some of my like some of the people who are really into like politics they will watch it but then for the most part they don't know anything they watch mostly entertainment news i feel uh -huh. like and they're like tv shows because i i will ask uh -huh. like even my close friends stuff and they're like what are you talking about that that's going on and um like the big news like the the bus that was going into the US uh, mm -hmm. with the people from i think Ecuador i, I don't remember um yeah, where they're from yeah. oh yes. Yes, and so, like, that. everyone knew about that. Like, my friends in other countries knew about that, Europe and stuff. And they were like, oh, you know, how did it go? Did they get into the U.S.? You know, are those people okay? And I asked my Korean friend, you know, oh, what do you think about this situation, you know, that the U.S. deals with and how they deal with it? They were like, uh, what? <laughs> What's going on? Like, I just know that Trump is crazy. Like, that's all they always say. Or they ask me, like, what do you think about Trump? He's crazy, right? I'm like, why is that always the thing? Like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like, you don't know anything else. They just know what Trump says. That's really all uh, they hear. Okay. That's interesting. So fast. Oh, yeah. I think we, we're reaching the end here, Ren. I don't want to take much of your time. It's, is it evening for you? It's, uh... Uh, yeah, it is 9.55 p.m. Ah, now. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have to go get a bus. That, that's why uh, I was, I was like, I'm going to stop here because my back is hurting and my daughter fell asleep, so I didn't want to carry oh, her yet. Oh, so this yes. was a great break, a <laughs> great break to save oh. my body. <laughs> yeah. Ren, thank you so much for accepting the invitation yeah. here. It was awesome to get to talk to you. Uh, yeah, next year, my plan is to continue using Instagram. Uh, I want to be in touch with everybody. It's, it's been great. This year was awesome for me. And uh, your account is very, very inspiring. One of oh, the reasons I made my videos too. So it was lovely. <laughs> the chat was lovely. Thank you so much. Okay. Do you yes, have one you. last? Do you have one oh. last tip to give to English students or to learner uh, language learners in general? Uh, for English students, I would say just well, any language learner, just read. Practice reading in the language that you're learning because I found that, you know, you're, you're practicing, your mouth is practicing it. When you're reading it, read out loud. So you're also hearing that. And then when you get in front of someone, you know, you already have that language in you from what you read that you can at least get that out. So I think that is very helpful. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Very good. So thank you, uh, everybody uh, who has joined the live stream. Thank you, Ren, again. I wish you yeah, good luck you for with, your, with your plans. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you again for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye-bye. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> oh, oh. There